Welcome to All That Matters, a show about what's really worth your attention in the markets and economy today. Join hosts Michael Antonelli and Ross Mayfield as they tackle the latest headlines and answer real questions from clients. Welcome to All That Matters with Mike and Ross. Ross, today we got a, a topic that's super important to me. I, I, I've been super excited about this particular episode, not because I think that, you know, the other episodes are not great. I think we do some some really, really good episodes. In fact, we just did one on the national debt. We did one on elections. And I think I think we've got really good feedback on and we've got the most views we've ever had, Ross. We're, we're, we're going places here. I, I, we're going places. Um, but today we're going to tackle a topic that I think is is not only important, I think it's basically your greatest challenge. We're calling this your greatest challenge. And that challenge is existing and investing in a world that's just kind of steeped in negativity and steeped in disinformation. And how can we as strategists and advisors and clients all navigate a world that's so treacherous in terms of information and, and what we read and what we see? So Ross, you know, we're going to tackle this in three ways. We're going to tackle the current state of the world, kind of how we view it, a couple of cool data points that we saw, and then we'll talk about what you can do about all this. So Ross, you, you feel like this is an important topic, right? I think it's the I think it's the most important thing ever. Um, you know, we we know that long termism is rewarded in the market, and in in many ways, it's never been harder to take a kind yeah. of a long view of things because of the negativity and because of the kind of short termism uh, of the world we live in. Yeah, it's 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 really 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 difficult to to say to somebody, hey, save your money for twenty years, and and when you do, you'll reach all your cherished goals. But but then not acknowledge that each day and month that goes by is super, super difficult. So we're going to try to tackle that problem today. First, uh, current state of the world. How we view the current state of the world. Why is it so difficult? Why is this so difficult? Ross, I saw this tweet by a friend of the show, Morgan Housels. He said, the four most dangerous financial traits are FOMO. So that's fear of missing out, seeing something go and you want to be involved in it. Demanding certainty where none exists. Uh, impatience. We, we talk about that all the time. Impatience. I want to be rich now. And then the last one, gullibility. So of those four, which one stands out the most to you? Uh, off the bat, it, it's number two. It's demanding uncertainty in a world where there is none, right? That's, there never has been, there never will be. And yet we have to put our money to work for long periods of time, irregardless. Um, humans, are, we just, we crave certainty and predictability and the world is just unwilling to give it to us. It is the, the kind of great irony uh, of, you know, humanity, I guess. Um, but yeah, you know, we have this hindsight bias, everything in hindsight seems more certain or more obvious than it was at the time. Um, but there have been, you know, uncertainties throughout history that have made it really difficult to put money to work. Wars, inflation, pandemic, like it's all happened before. It felt uncertain at the time and it feels uncertain today and it will forever in the future. So I, to me, that's the biggest one. What about you? I kind of like the last one. I, I, I like gullibility and not because I think that Everybody is just constantly being fooled, or it's easy to just, or, or it's easy to pull the wool over our eyes, and we're just we just kind of make these decisions. I think a dangerous financial trade is gullibility, and, and to me that means that you 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 soak up a lot of disinformation and think that it's real, or somebody says something like the dollar's collapsing, and you think that means you need to do something. Like it's it's very easy in a in a hyper hyper in, informed world to think that everything matters, and that's. That's just not the case. We actually named the series All That Matters because we wanted to just produce something once a month that actually matters to you. We could do this weekly, but would it all matter to you? Of course not. We're not trying to add noise to the world. We're trying to remove noise from the world and focus our, our viewers and our clients on what's important. So gullibility, I think, is a dangerous financial trait, especially in a world that is as difficult to navigate as this. Why? Because human beings throughout throughout our history have have, have been risk-averse species. We are a species that has learned to run from dinosaurs or not touch fire or keep yourself out of danger, that gut feeling you have, that's your very risk averse brain trying to keep you out of trouble. What happens though, when you take that kind of a species and you tell them, A, I want you to invest over long time frames, and B, you're gonna get pumped with negativity nonstop. You are going to be literally inundated with as much negative news as we can give you. In fact, you actually get more news in one day than somebody in the 1800s did all year. Imagine that. Ross, how, like, think about how much news you consume on a daily basis. Yeah, it's incessant. I, I start my day off with like 50 tabs open on my, my you know, Chrome tab and I never get to a lot. There, there's endless amounts of information. You're right. We are here today as humans because we evolved this risk averse nature. We ran and we hid and we survived. 
in today's world, it's not the same, you know, asset that it was a hundred thousand years ago. Yeah. And the way the world has evolved in just the last 20 years with, you know, social media and phones and 24 hour news cycle it is completely counter to, to what that actually, you know, has trained us to do. And so it creates this friction that makes investing over long time periods really, really hard today. Um, yeah, I think so harder than probably ever in history. Just know that you're, you're all of us, me, Ross, you, your advisor, everybody, we're all dealing with the same brain that, that makes us risk averse. And, and the way that the way that we get through this and succeed is important. And we're going to tell you at the end what we think is the best way to, to deal with this stuff. So let's move on to the next section. We found a couple of cool charts that we wanted to talk about that reinforces this negative world that you live in and why this is such a difficult thing for you to do, all of us to do, frankly. The first one is a, a pretty cool chart that says, you know, Americans who follow a certain kind of news, they were asked, you know, is that content negative or is it positive? So at the top, you'd see politics and government. Is that negative or positive? It's just overwhelmingly negative. Uh, you keep going down, you know, climate change, international affairs, business and economics. The top of this is all viewed by the people who watch it as negative. Okay. Overwhelmingly negative. But at the bottom, you'll see things like sports, science and technology, arts and entertainment. You'll see that those are overwhelmingly positive, right? Hey, I'm watching my favorite sports team. I get to, I get to, listen to some takes about that or hey I'm, I'm i'm watching something about you know a pop culture star that's i, I feel that as positive so the people who ross the people who consume this content at the top business politics it's all viewed as negative and yeah we keep going back to the well right it's this like endless cycle of this, this kind of doom loop of negativity um we we just keep going back to the well and spending our time there and you get kind of trapped in an echo chamber of negativity and you know, because this stuff feels important, it's, it's geopolitics, it's the business world, it's, it's world, you know, world politics, it's the stuff that feels really important and heady that we should be paying attention to. And yet it's increasingly tinted as negative and viewed as negative by the people consuming it. You just end up in this absolute spiral that I think is really, really difficult to bust out of. The, the people giving you this news, there's, they have every incentive to make it negative. And, and when they make it negative, you watch more. When you watch more, they get higher ratings, they're advertisers. So I, I don't want to get too cynical about that. But remember that the stuff that you feel like really matters, most of it's going to be tilted negative. It's, it's just that's how the world works right now. Algorithms, news, social media, all of it is meant to capture attention with negativity. And this is your greatest challenge because you have to navigate that and find out what's important and what's not. What actually matters to my money and what doesn't. Ross, the second one, I find the most fascinating thing. I want to write like an entire series on this. It was a poll by Gallup, okay? And, and we'll put it up on the screen for a little bit so you can look at it. American satisfaction with their personal life is the top and Americans uh, satisfied with the way the US is going is at the bottom. So the green line at the top shows Americans satisfaction in the way things are going in their personal life. And from 1980 to today, it pretty much goes nowhere. Like between 77 and 80% of people that are like, yep, my life is fine. But the bottom line, you'll notice, Ross, the way people are satisfied with the way things are going in the US has plummeted. Like what, what's the disconnect here? I think it's a, the, the great question like facing us today, right? We, we talked about over the last couple of years, this vibe session, right? And it's the same idea. Everybody's reporting that they're super unhappy, that they're miserable, that things are bad. And yet the economy is booming. The job market is booming. The stock market is going up. So what's the disconnect? Um, well, two things that, that, that jump out to me at the chart. Well, number one, like I'm glad everyone continues to say that they're doing well. I, at, at its, at its yeah. base, that's a good thing, right? That sort of uh, you know, positivity or good feelings about your own personal situation drive consumer spending and engaging in communities and like all the things that actually matter. You know, as for how people view the world it, or the direction of the US, US yeah. it's really tricky. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's kind of gone on a roller coaster over time. We've made a couple big bottoms recently, but the, the market guy in me says, look, it, it bottomed in the early 80s, the early 90s, 2009, 2020. Like those were great times to invest. That was right, you know, right at the most negative would have been the worst opportunity to get out of the market or to make a rash decision and go more conservative with the portfolio. So I don't know. I, I you know, there's a, kind of the Kleinism attitude, I guess, but I, it, it's really hard circle to square for me. I mean, what do you think? It's, it's, it's the most fascinating look into human behavior I can think of. I honestly look at it and I say, people are basically saying that my, I'm fine. I, I'm satisfied with the way my life is going, my community, my church, the things around me, I'm satisfied with that. But when I look at it, things in aggregate, I'm dissatisfied with it. But how can that be? How can everybody be happy with the way their things are going, but in aggregate things are going poorly? 
again, this reinforces this thing that we were just trying to hammer home, which is you're going to be told things are bad because if, if you were told things are good, you'd stop watching. If you think things are bad elsewhere, but things are fine for you, that should tick off your brain to say, how can that be? How can everybody seem to be okay around me? But in, in the aggregate, we're all, we're all mad. Oftentimes, Ross and I get caught up in things that kind of pull us apart from, from the real person. And we try to fight that hard. Like we could look at economic numbers and be like, this is fine. This is fine. Where, where, when somebody pays 12 bucks for bacon or gas is expensive, that really hurts them. And we understand that. And we try to stay in touch with that stuff and, and understand that dissatisfaction. So we're not here to say everything's fine. Why I don't understand why people are saying the US is bad. But what the point we're trying to make is that the world that we, the, that we occupy, the one that fights against you all the time, is going to always tell you things are negative. Even if your neighbor thinks it's fine and you think it's fine and you're satisfied with the way things are going. It's just this weird kind of world that we all live in. So how do we, let's move to the third part. How do we deal with all this? We've told you what, what we think is your greatest challenge, given you some data around it and kind of wondered how this is all evolving and why it's all evolving, but how can we deal with this? And Ross, the first way I think we can deal with this is to be skeptical, right? Yeah. Um, look, I, I, I want to, draw like a distinct line between skeptical and distrustful. This, this whole exercise that we're going through and talking about is not anti-media. It's not anti-mainstream media kind of sentiment, but be skeptical. Mike is right about the disinformation in the world today. And that is not a problem that is going to get better with time with the way, you know, the proliferation of AI and bots and social media, like it is very, very easy um, for disinformation to spread and for, for people to get into kind of like echo chambers of that sort of disinformation. So be skeptical you know, look for different people with different worldviews, check sources, you know, that, you know, take it back to, back to basics of, you know, grade school, like cite your sources, check for, check for, uh, you know, other people. Are they saying the same thing? Is there a difference of opinion? Are people putting off opinion as fact? Just be, a, you know, a healthy skepticism in a world like we live in today, I think is going to go, go a long way in being a successful investor, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, one of the hallmarks of a great investor is a healthy amount of skepticism, not distrust, just a healthy amount of skepticism. If somebody tells you that the dollar is losing its reserve currency status, your default assumption should be skepticism. Why are you saying that? Why do you think that's true? What knowledge do you have? Why, why, how could it possibly affect me? Who are you, essentially? Like you, you need to really take that with a healthy dose of skepticism because it just could be disinformation. It could be a coordinated attack on the US by our enemies. Like it could be anything. Just know that what you read, you have to have a dose of skepticism with. Another one I think is important, Ross, is kind of avoiding the trap of thinking everything matters to your money. I, I think you have to avoid that trap. Anything you see on social media or on the news, like thinking about a war, thinking about um, central bank digital currencies, thinking about social credit scores, all these things that just get thrown at us and against the wall, thinking that they matter to your money and to the profits of the companies of the United States of America. Okay, Talk it out with somebody. Talk it out with us. Talk it out with your advisor. Talk it out with a friend. Surround yourself with a diverse set of views so you're not in an echo chamber. Young, old, um, different political ideologies, different socioeconomic statuses. What would you change your mind about if you grew up in a different way? These are crucial ways to think about the world. Crucial. You can't just assume that a piece of information is A, true, and B, it matters to your money. Okay. You have to have a healthy dose of skepticism. Ross, you know, you and I talk about this a lot, right? To, to, to surround yourself with, with competing views, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something that I've heard you say before, and I, I think is really valuable is you're kind of the average of the you know, three to five people or views that are in your, in your inner circle, right? So that could be a news source. It could be your, your family, your, your close friends, a, you know, a colleague that you talk to every day. Um, if those aren't diverse, yeah, you end up with an echo chamber. But to your bigger point, I mean, so much of it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to the long term. I mean, your money is invested, most of your money, at least in theory, is invested for the long term. The shelf life of most of the news that hits Twitter or Facebook or even, even you know, the, the, the news channels is, is so much shorter than the shelf life of your money. Yeah. Um, and that's just, it, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard dichotomy to kind of square there, but it, but it has to be the, the thing at the front of your mind every time. Like, will I care about this news in five years or 10 years? Usually it's no. Yeah. Which, which brings up a good point I want to make to close this out, which is I saw this take I, online. I, I thought it was phenomenal. And, and it was this, it says your most important resource. Okay. is not money or time. It's actually your attention. 
And let's think about that just real quickly as we wrap up. Your attention is a finite resource. It's spendable, okay? Think about where you're giving that attention to. Because if you gave all of your attention, which is your most, most important resource, to news and negativity and, and, and consuming a bunch of worries about the world, if you do that, it's going to make not only investing hard, but it's going to turn you probably into a cynic about the world. You're going to view the world negatively. It's going to change your worldview. Imagine you spent all your time and your, 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 your valuable resource, that attention on family and friends and travel and, and yes, taking care of the things that are important, but, but most of your attention is going over to these like things that you love, walking, being with friends, having a coffee shop. Ross, those two worlds are distinct. So attention is our most valuable resource, right? Yeah. And I would just, uh, I would just say there are some of our smartest people in the world are working at billion and trillion dollar companies to find ways to get that attention from you. It is a finite resource. It is incredibly valuable to them. And so you're fighting a battle every day, right? To make sure that your attention is is honed in on the things that matter to Mike's point. Um, but it it is a battle, like make no mistake. There are things that are constantly competing for your attention. And, you know, as we've noted throughout this conversation, a lot of times tinged with negativity or disinformation are things that are really hard to bat against. So you have to be really discerning with it. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I, yeah. I have this on me all the time. Like it is not easy, um, yeah. but it's so super this, important. This is your greatest challenge. What we've said here today is your greatest challenge. And we are here to help you. Everybody that at Baird, all, all, the, all of us think about this. We think about this being your greatest challenge. How do we navigate what is becoming a very, very noisy world and stick to the things that truly matter, the things, you know, all that matters, right? The things that we talk to you about, the things we think are super, super important. So uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We added a super exciting video coming up next month. So stay tuned. You're going you're gonna to absolutely love this one. It's going to be a home run. So Ross, uh, take us out. All right, Mike, good to talk to you as always. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next month. Thanks for watching All That Matters. Opinions expressed in this episode belong solely to Mike and Ross and do not necessarily represent the opinions of Baird. This program is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for any investment decisions.